first of all, thank you to the society for having us this week. Um, the weekend's been really great, and the, the residents, the, the new residents at USF, have felt very welcomed. Um, so this study was actually done up at NYU, and uh, this is a, a biome biomechanical investigation into use of the spatial frame. The, uh, just a history of, for the circular fixators. Um, Dr. Elizarov originally developed these working uh, in isolation starting in the 1950s in Siberia. And he developed his fixator for use in uh, limb lengthening and deformity correction. And uh, this was found to be very uh, fruitful in the correction of deformities and um, developing theory into um, distraction osteogenesis. The Taylor spatial frame is a second generation fixator which was developed by uh, Dr. Charles Taylor out of um, Cleveland, or Campbell Clinic in, um, in Memphis. And as you can see, it's a, it's a hexapod design. The, uh, the hexapod is not a new uh, construct. This has been around in engineering and in medicine for years. And it's a, uh, it's a very uh, uh, well-tooled device in making um, uh, very small adjustments in planar orientation. And this is why it has become or found widespread use uh, in good utility um, in deformity correction. So the major differences between the two, as you can see, have to do with the orientation of the, of the struts to the uh, rings themselves. And this is what became very relevant with our study. So the, the senior investigator was, was applying a spatial frame one day to a 13-year-old who uh, was undergoing his you know, fifth or sixth surgery for uh, a, a refractory congenital pseudoarthrosis. And the, um, this is an interoperative x-ray which was taken. And um, as you can see, the, um, the, the rings and the strut angles was actually very, very acute on this case. And, and gross frame instability was encountered. And the frame was assembled, and the, the components of the frame were, in, were, uh, were analyzed, and there were no structural uh, deficiencies to be found. And so this led us to ask the question, why did this frame fall apart? So we looked at the frame, and, and the ring strut angle seemed to be the only thing which was different from this frame construct from um, the normal frame constructs we had. And um, so in terms of our testing, we, we used an Instron servo hydraulic machine we loaded the spatial frames uh, with this aluminum device, which we developed with the help of Smith and Nephew. And um, we loaded it. Uh, each load was 20 seconds, uh, a total of 100 newtons loaded linearly. Um, we loaded it in many different uh, orientations. Uh, we loaded it in compression, bending, and torsion. And this is for parallel rings and center loading. We also looked at uh, off-center loading, which is common in practice. And we also looked at shear offset. Um, and we loaded it in four different uh, orientations for this. And we also looked at angular offset of the frame, which is also common, especially with deformity correction. Our results for our most compelling results were in uh, parallel uh, ring formation uh, with compression. And here, as you can see, we found a very um, kind of danger zone uh, below 20 degrees of a ring strut angle and kind of questionable uh, stability in the 20 to 30 degree range. We actually were not able to test below 10 degrees because the frame itself just fell apart. So for parallel bending with, um, uh, with parallel rings, um, we actually didn't get um, very compelling data at first. Uh, this was looking at net displacement uh, in bending and the, um, the parabolic distribution we got, we really didn't know what to make of that. And so giving this some thought, you know, as, as the frame lengthened and the, the displacement increased, you actually expect this because no matter what you're testing, if, if, the, um, if the material stays the same and you, you lengthen the moment arm on it, obviously the, the bending is going to increase. So what we did is we went back and we, um, we divided the uh, the amount of displacement we got by the ring or by the um, uh, device uh, length. And when we did this, once again, we found a very nice curve uh, giving us um, good delineation as to where the, the safe zones um, may or may not exist. And once again, 30 degrees of a ring strut angle appeared to be uh, the threshold. 
So in terms of the other testing that we did with the um, offset, with the um, shear, and with the angular uh, dis uh, displacement, we really didn't find uh, any differences which, which led us to conclude that these are unsafe um, uh, conformations. So in terms of what's out there, um, different studies have been done um, on the Elizaroff device. Uh, ULMAS found uh, an overall uh, st or axial stiffness of the Elizaroff device to be about 123 newtons per millimeter. Uh, Goodship did a, um, a modified Elizaroff device, which was not found to be as stable. Uh, the spatial frame actually held up very, very well with um, 200 newtons um, per millimeter uh, for compression um, with ring stride angles above 30 degrees. However, below 30 degrees, the frame um, on average was, was less than 50. And um, therefore, this led us to not recommend using it in these conformations. So in terms of um, why this happens, uh, we, we felt that this came down to simple strut mechanics. And so if you take a, a, a Taylor spatial frame oriented with 70 degree ring strut angles and you load it with 100 newtons, the forces you get on it are much less than the net force. You can see that each strut experiences 54 newtons of force and then the um, outward displacement force on the uh, struts at the bottom is 20 newtons. However, and you end up getting very little uh, compression. However, if you change this, so now you've got a, a Taylor spatial frame with a 10 degree ring strut angle. How does this change the forces? So once again, we load it with 100 newtons. The forces experienced by the struts are now triple, over triple, uh, the initial force. And that's on each strut for a, for a true strut configuration. And so this demonstrates you know, what happens. So then. Because of the angle of the ring of, of the struts, you get rotational forces at the hinges, and then this leads to significant compression. So as you can see, throughout history, um, the, the strut bridge is, is, um, uh, or the truss bridge has, has uh, been a proven uh, structure architecturally. And, but nowhere in here are you ever going to see um, angles of the, of the trusses uh, below 30 degrees, and we believe this is um, in large part um, responsible for the, the performance of the spatial frame. So in conclusion, um, spatial frame stability appears to be governed by uh, truss mechanics. We don't recommend uh, use of ring strut angles below 30 degrees, and um, again, uh, a lot of the there was, there was quite a bit of laxity, which I didn't really talk about. We don't really have time for today, but initial designs of the spatial frame would benefit from decreased initial laxity. And so, thank you very much.